In this lesson, we'll learn about animation layers in Max. The scene is animation layers start in your project files. So as we saw in the previous lesson, we can't just go ahead and translate the ball downward to add the bounce because it's locked to the path constraint. It's locked to that path that we've created. So instead what we could do is create another level of control by working with animation layers that will allow us to keep the movement of the path constraint and add the bounce that we need as the ball moves to the endpoint. All right, so this is going to be great stuff. In a sense, we can create non-destructive animations this way because we don't have to tweak any of our keys. If it wasn't for animation layers, we'd have to collapse the entire animation, work with several keys, clean those keys up, and then add the bounce afterwards. So animation layers can potentially save us a lot of time. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. With the ball selected, I'll just go ahead and right-click on an empty space on the toolbar, and we can access the animation layers that way. Another way is to go to animation, and here they are. Okay, great. So from here, we need to enable our animation layers. So I'll go ahead and choose this first option on the shelf. And now we get to tell Max what parameters we'd like to key. We just need to worry about the position. Because remember, we still have full control over the rotation of this ball, so no need to add it to an animation layer. So I'm just going to go ahead and uncheck Rotation and Scale and choose OK. So now that this has been enabled, you can see by default we have this base layer that our original animation is connected to. So what we need to now do is create a brand new fresh layer to add animation. So I'll go to Add Animation Layer. Alright, from here we can go ahead and change its name from an, from anim layer 01 to let's say ball bounce. We want to stay descriptive so that there's clarity in our scene. Now here is another important option. We have the ability to duplicate the active controller type or we can go ahead and work with a new default controller type. We want to use this option. If we don't, we won't be able to have the animation of our our ball moving along the path preserved. It's going to be wiped out by using that first option. So we'll go ahead and use use default controller type and choose OK. And now just to test this out as we scrub, notice we not only have this new animation layer, this clean slate, but at the same time we still have our ball's main animation along the path preserved. Great. All right, so now it's time to get this ball bouncing. Now, something very important as well to keep in mind is the shot camera. All right, I'm going to head over to Views, Viewport Configuration, Layout, and I'm going to choose the two-panel layout. The layout to our left will hold our shot camera. The layout to our right, the perspective. We want to do this because we need to keep an eye on our shot camera to make sure the ball is going to be framed correctly. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and press Alt W to go to the two pane layout. Again, on the left side will be our shot camera. So I'll just go ahead and right click, go to cameras and choose camera one. And then we can press F3 so we can see our environment in shaded mode. On the right side will be the perspective camera. So I'll go ahead and right click, switch this to perspective and again press F3. From here we can press Z to zoom into our soccer ball. Okay, great. So let's see how things look now. Excellent. The ball is moving along the path the way we need it to. It's exactly what we want. So now it's time to add some bounce. So I'll just head back over to the perspective. I'll turn on Auto Key. This helps us to speed up our keying process. The only thing we need to be careful with or conscious of with auto key is that we can override our animations this way. So if we're if we're just testing out a pose, we can go ahead and use set key. But if we're animating, again, if you want to save time, go ahead and use auto key. Okay, so from here, we can start to add the bounce. So let's say we add a contact frame where the ball hits the floor on frame 14. We'll have it bounce three times. So here's the first bounce on frame 14. I'll just go ahead and check to make sure the ball is not 
and are penetrating through the floor. So I'm going to just bring them down just a little bit more. Okay, that looks good. So now that we have a down position, we can go ahead and clone this key to whatever other frame we need to. Again, we're going to have three bounces, so we're going to need to clone this to other times. That saves us a lot of time. We don't need to go to another frame and reposition the ball and make sure it's not interpenetrating, uh, blah, 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 blah. So instead, all we can, all we need to do is go ahead and just clone this key. So I'm going to go ahead and hold down shift and drag with the left mouse button. Notice the key is now cloned. Let's go ahead and drag this to about 35. That'll be our next bounce. And our last bounce will have happen on frame 55. So again, hold down shift and drag. Okay, great. So now that we have our down positions, we're ready to have our up positions where the ball bounces in the air. So again, all we need to do is clone our keys. We already have a position where the ball is in the air. All right, so let's go ahead and work smart about this. We'll go ahead and right click on our trackbar and head over to filter and choose current transform. What this will do is show us the keys connected to our current transform. So we want to make sure that we have our move tool visible. Okay, great. So now we're ready to go ahead and take this up position and clone this down the line. So I'm going to go ahead and clone this so that the first key is going to be cloned to about frame 24. And then 24 we can clone to 45. And then 45 we can clone to our last frame, 66. If you notice that as you try to clone, it's it's not cloning the way you'd like it to. Just make sure that you, you kind of let go and then go ahead and select that key again and clone. Okay, but chances are you don't need to do that. But if you notice that it's not working quite right, okay, chances are you just need to uh, let go for a little while, grab that key again, and clone it. All right, so with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at our animation now as we scrub. There's our first bounce, and then it rises up. Great. Bounces again. Wonderful. Rises up, and then bounces, and then rises. This is looking great. Now, Here's the problem, and I'll go ahead and hit play so we can study this. You can see that our our ball is kind of just flowing around this corner instead of actually bouncing. So what that means is that we need to tweak our function curve for weight so that this looks like a more convincing bounce. So what I'll do is right-click with the ball selected and head over back to the curve editor. Now we need to get to the position Y keys, or position Z. That's the bounce axis, or the up and down axis. All right, so again, I'll expand our window. We can go ahead and head over to the position Z track. So let me show you a quick trick. To get weight in this ball as it bounces, go ahead and select the contact keys, okay, 14, 35, and 55, and go ahead and just simply set that to fast. What's going to happen now is the ball is going to hold for a little bit longer in the air and hit hit hard and fast when we get to that contact position. So notice now, if we were to go back to the animation and hit play, here's what we end up with. A much better ball bounce. Great. All right. So we've created a bounce in our ball, and we've also learned a quick way to add weight as it bounces. All right, so now that that's done, the next step is going to be to add some rotation to this ball. So we're going to get into some more hand keying, and we'll do that in the next lesson.